principles of food science and nutrition. Today I will be dealing with the bacteria, yeast, molds, viruses and parasites. What is food microbiology? Food microbiology is the study of microorganisms that play a role in food production, food spoilage, food preservation and foodborne diseases. In 1837, Skewan proposed that the yeast which appeared during alcoholic fermentation was a microscopic plant. May, means it was a microorganism which causes the alcoholic fermentation. And in between 1857 to 1876, Pasteur showed that microorganisms were responsible for the chemical changes that take place in food and beverage. Means in in this course, you have to study about the food microorganism that causes positive or negative effect in the food. For example, positive effect. What is the positive effect? Means uh, for the production of yogurt, curd, we require the microorganism that is useful for us. But the microorganism which causes spoilage to our food that is the harmful microorganism. So in this course you have to study both types of microorganism. Now what are the importance of microorganism? Microorganism is like bacteria, yeast and fungi are uh, causes food borne diseases. It also causes food spoilage but for when you talk about the positive effect of microorganism it is used in the bioprocessing as a food additive, as a food biopreservation and probiotics. What is probiotics? I think this term is, will be newer for you. It is uh, probiotics is the use of living bacteria or fungi that causes positive effect in our body. For example, uh, yogurt is a good example of probiotics that if you give to a your child, it prevents from the bacteria and in human beings, it also stimulates, means it also makes our bone strong. So these are the positive effect of microorganism. So one by one, I will be dealing with the various type of microorganism. First is bacteria. Bacteria are the probiotics and unicellular cellular whose sizes ranges between 0.5 to 5 micrometer and it can easily pass from the natural pores of the food. Shapes ranges from the cocci, bacilli, spiral curved and on the basis of the growth in which it occurs if the oxygen is present uh, and uh, bacterial growth takes place that type of microorganism uh, bacteria is aerobic in nature and if the growth occurs in the absence of oxygen that type of bacteria is anaerobic in nature. But if the bacteria grows in an atmosphere devoid of oxygen but manages also in the presence of air means it can also grow in the presence of oxygen so such type of bacteria is called facultative anaerobes. These are the different shapes of bacteria you can see the large diversity in the shapes of bacteria like diplococci two, bac two cells are joined together that here the streptococci chain of Bacteria is formed, tetrad, four stage, sashina, eight cell stage, and staphylococci that is looks like the grapes, bunches of grapes. That the rod chain of bacilli, flagellate rods, spore former, these are all other different shapes of bacteria. And by bacterial spores are more resistant to the processing condition and it cannot grow in the media which is more acidic. It means bacteria grow in the low acid food with some exception, but yeast and mold grow in the high acidic condition. When we talk about the multiplication of bacteria, it divides by the cell division and under the favorable condition, it double its number at every 30 minutes. This is the first bacteria I will be dealing with, Bacillus cereus. Serious that causes the, it is a harmful bacteria that causes a diarrheal illness due to consumption of dessert, meat, dishes, dairy products like that and it is cooked and when kept at room temperature, it causes diarrheal illness. 
uh, it is capable of producing proteolytic and amylotic enzyme and also phospholipase C that is also called lecithinase. The diarrheal illness is caused by due to the interior toxin that is a toxin produced by this bacteria. Next, bacillus subtilis. It is also known by the name of grass bacillus or hay bacillus which is commonly found in the soil and it, it also produces a proteolytic enzyme subtilisine and which and the spores of this bacteria can survive extreme heat during cooking so it doesn't its spore doesn't kill when you cook the food and it causes the spoliagen bread dough and a strain of bacterial subtilis which is also known by Bacillus natto, it is used in the commercial production of Japanese food natto, means it is also used in the production of Japanese food natto as well as a Korean food. Next is the Corini bacterium. It is widely distributed and it is useful in industrial setting as Corini bacterium glutamicum. It is some strains of this bacteria causes human disease. Disease, for example, Corini bacterium diphtheri, it is a pathogen responsible for diphtheria. But you can see that this Corini bacterium glutamicum, it is useful in the industri industrial preparation. And this Corini bacterium diphtheri acquires the capacity to produce diphtheria toxin only after the interacting with the bacteriophage. Bacteriophage is a type of virus. Next is Corini bacterium perfringens. It is commonly found on the meat and meat products and it, a toxin is produced by it that is called enterotoxin or beta toxin and it multiplies very rapidly in food. It means its doubling time is less than 10 minutes and its spores are also resistant by the radiation, desiccation and heat. Thus, survive complete, incompletely or inadequately cooked food. Next is the Clostridium botulinum. It produces a most potent toxin known that is neurotoxin. So, it is causes the botulism that is a serious disease. And botulinum spores are probably the most radiation resistance spores of public health concern. Next is the Campylobacter, the species Campylobacter jejuni uh, and Campylobacter coli causes diarrhea in humans and it is as dangerous as the Salmonella bacteria. Next is the Irvinia, it causes the fire blight in apple, pear and other rosaceous crops. Next is the Escherichia coli that are associated with foodborne gastroenteritis gastroenteritis it they grow very slowly in food held at refrigerator temperature that is 5 degrees celsius and this e coli is a good indicator of fecal pollution which is capable of producing acid and gases and off flavor in food next is lactococcus it is a genus of lactic acid bacteria and there are three strain of this that is lactis cremoris and lactis biover diaictai lactis. They are intimately associated with the dairy products and these are commonly used in dairy industry in the manufacture of fermented dairy products like cheese. Their main purpose in dairy production is the rapid acidification of milk. So, by the drop in pH, a growth of spoilage and pathogenic bacteria is minimized. This bacteria also play a role in flavor of final product. So, it is commonly used in the industry. Next is the lactobacillus bulgaricus like that. This causes the fermentation of sugar. And these are of two types, homofermentive and heterofermentive. Homofermentive type is the uh, bacteria which causes the fermentation of sugar to the lactic acid. But in heterofermentic, in addition to lactic acid, acetic acid, carbon dioxide and precious amount of volatile compounds are produced. 
These are used in the production of fermented plant dairy and meat products. It is also implicated in the spoilage of wine and beer if present in higher concentration. Next is leuconostal. It is a heterofermentive type and they are generally slime forming and leuconostic species along with the other lactic acid bacteria such as pediococcus is responsible for the fermentation of cabbage which causes the sorecrant formation and it is nothing but a finely shredded cabbage that has been fermented by lactic acid bacteria. And next is the listeria. It enters the host cell and grows inside the cell. And it, uh, the most significant virulent factor associated with this is listeriolysine O. Next is propinobacterium species. It is uh, used as in a dairy starter for the production of Swiss type of cheese. And it is generally split into cutaneous and dairy group. And this uh, type of bacteria have a role in production of flavor compounds in cheese by proteolysis and, and propionic acid production. Next is Salmonella. It is a, causes a dangerous disease in humans. If, all, if a single or a few cell is ingested by the human beings, it causes the enteric fever and milk meat and poultry are the principal vehicle of human bonds salmonellosis next is the streptococcus thermophilus these are associated with in the food te technology uh, the species is thermophilus and it is used in the manufacture of yogurt in the co-culture with bulgaricus species next the other uh, bacteria which i have given the name that is enterococcus, micrococcus, proteus, pediococcus, pseudomonas, staphylococcus, shigella, vibrio, yersinia. Next is the yeast. Yeast we all have known, we all know the word yeast. Yeast is a unicellular fungi that are widely distributed in nature. It, it generally grows in the high sugar concentration food whose concentration ranges between 55 to 60 percent is and its size ranges from 5 to 8 micrometers in diameter and it is usually larger than the bacteria. Most yeast is spherical and ellipsoidal and they are generally found in soil, air, on the skin and in the intestine of animals. This yeast are, have been used for centuries for the leavening of bread and to bring about the fermentation of food uses. Means if you yeast is harmful if they bring about the undesirable fermentation but it, it is useful if they bring about the desirable fermentation now i will be dealing with one by one the different yeast first is the candida candida causes the fermentation of cocoa beans as a component of kefir, kefir grains and many other products including beers and fruit juices Next is Dibaromyces. It is one of the prevalent yeast genera in dairy products. Next is Luviriomyces. Uh, the species is Marcianus is one of the most prevalent yeast in dairy products, kefir grains and cows. Cheese spoilage. Next is Rhodotorula. It is found on fresh poultry, shrimp, fish and beef. And some also grow on the surface of the butter. Next is the Saccharomyces. It is a useful yeast which is used by the bakers, beers in the making of wine and champagne. The species are Cerevisi and they are found in kefir grains and can be isolated from a wide range of foods. It rarely causes the food spoilage. Next is Torula spora, these are strong fermentation of sugar and it is most prevalent species is del bruro eki. This is the figure that I will be dealing with the next microorganism that is the mold. You can see in the figure it causes a cottony growth. It is a multicellular 
filamentous fungi that have a fuzzy or cottony appearance when they grow in the food. Here you can see in the figure also. And they are generally larger in yeast than yeast and strictly anaerobic in nature and they grow slowly than the bacteria. The first molds is aspergillus. They are widely distributed but one species that is aspergillus flavors. Flavors it causes aflatoxin means it is harmful molds. Uh, next um, species that is origi aspergillus origi it is used to hydrolyze starch by alpha amylase amylase in the production of shake aspergillus nicer is used to process citric acid from sucrose and to produce enzymes like galactosidase next is alternaria alternaria tenuous causes rotting in tomatoes and it also gives a rancid flavor in dairy products Next is gliotrichum. It is also called the dairy mold. It, they grow forming a yeast-like cottony creamy colony and they also establish an equipment and often grow on dairy products. That's why it is also called a dairy mold. Next is mucor. Mucor, it causes spoilage of vegetables. Penicillium, they are widely distributed and contain many species. Some species are used in the food production such as penicillium, Roque 40 and Penicillium Camemberti in cheese. Next is Rhizopus. They are involved in the spoilage of many fruits and vegetables. Rhizopus stonilifer is the common black mold. That common black bread mold means it affects the bread. Next is the virus. Virus are the extremely small size. Particles that range from the 25 to 250 micrometer in size, they are generally not truly really alive but replicate when it goes inside the living cell. So it may enter the in the food when the food products already contain virus at the time of slaughter or harvest or when it occurs during the processing, storage or distribution of food. Next is parasite. In, Ingestion of raw or semi-cooked food by humans can lead to infection by parasite. Food like pork, beef, lamb, shellfish, vegetables act as a vehicle for infection. Infected water, poor hygiene also spread the parasite. Cooking kills most of these parasites. So these are all about the different microorganisms uh, which affect the food quality but in both useful way or harmful way. Thank you.